One of the things I find so interesting about life lately and talking to people is how people make all sorts of assumptions about me or about trans people. Um, and I just find it really amusing because maybe it's because I work as a software tester. And so as a tester, I have to make sure that some piece of code is going to work the way it's supposed to or some new feature is going to work the way it's supposed to. And so I have to be really careful about making any sort of assumptions. So like, if I, if I draw a bath and the water is steaming, there's, steaming com there's steam coming out of the water, then I can probably assume that the water is hot, right? And so I might be careful about putting my hand right into the water because it might get burned. Now in software testing, it's not so cut and dry, like there are a lot of complexities going on and you have to be really careful about not making the assumptions, not making any assumptions really, because your assumptions could be wrong at any moment. And um, it's, you know, it's important to, to be doing the right thing when you're, when you're testing a piece of software that's going to go out to thousands of people. So whenever I, whenever I am, am talking about an experience I had in testing with the developers, I'll say, you know, I'm assuming that because this happened that, that this other thing is also true, but I don't know. And, you know, so I'm, you know, I like to get feedback. And I think that that's kind of more how people are, too. That when I, when someone finds out that I'm a transgendered woman, or if someone watching this video, you know, says, okay, here's this trans girl, um, there's all sorts of assumptions that go along with it. I promise you that unless you've met me in person, the likelihood that, that, you know, you know that you know the answer to these assumptions, I mean, you don't know them. I mean, I keep a lot of things kind of to myself. I don't share everything on this channel, you know, and I like that. Like, and this is probably going to drive all of you crazy. Like, none of you know what kind of surgeries I've had or if I've had surgeries. None of you know my sexual orientation, because I've never stated it. I've never stated the gender of my ex. I've never talked about other people that I've been with. So, how could you know? Maybe you assume that I'm a straight trans girl, or maybe you assume I'm a gay trans girl, or maybe you assume I'm, I'm a bi trans girl, and maybe one of those is right, you know? But how do you know? You don't. And, but obviously the biggest assumption that people make is that you have a penis, or do you have a penis, or they want to know. Like, if you're a transgendered woman, do you have a penis? Does that mean you've had a pe you have a penis, or have you had the surgery? <laughs> and like, hi, nice to meet you, like, what's between your legs, you know? Like, I, I just think it's so funny that, that in so many communications I've had with people, you know, on Facebook and on YouTube and in my life, it's always a question that comes up so quickly. Like, oh gosh, you're transgendered, have you had the surgery? There is so much more to going through this transition that it's like, why does it matter? And it's none of your business. So, I just think that it's it's really curious this human nature of you know obsession with genitals like I mean I'm not a transgendered man so I don't know what kind of questions a lot of trans men get asked but it's like you know I, I can imagine that I assume that they are still predominantly about primary and or secondary sex characteristics and lack or lack thereof, <clears throat> presence or lack thereof. And like, I don't know, I mean, for me, I guess there's, there's definitely a sexual part of this transition. Um, and 
some of my earliest clues, not the very earliest, but some of the earliest clues for me came in puberty uh, and were very, very much related to sex. Um, but like, I live perfectly happy and have, you know, regardless of what's between my legs as, as a female. And, um, so I don't know, I just think that, that, that if you're a person that's interested in trans issues and trans people, and you want to understand who we are, what we go through, like, try to think of some other questions besides, have you had the surgery? Because it doesn't matter. I mean, surgery doesn't change a person, it doesn't change who they are. Um, and after people have surgery, you know, sometimes it doesn't solve all the problems. Sometimes people go through this transition because they there's a problem and they feel like, if I change my gender, it'll fix it. And sometimes it doesn't work out. And people have regret, or people learn to live with it, or, you know, it can lead to all sorts of tragedy and happiness. So, so I just think that that's so funny, that assumption, that it's so important. And that not knowing is so it grates on you. It grates on you. <laughs> I've learned to live with it. You know, not knowing all the time. It's fun. It makes life interesting. You get to know people as people instead of as a sex, as a gender, as a gender marker on a piece of identification. But there's another meaning to the phrase the dick association. A double entendre, if you will. I've had a lot of emails um, lately from YouTube. You know, people are sending me emails. It's awesome. I love talking to people, and ninety-nine percent of them are are you know, perfect English, like passionate people, concerned people, you know, people that have all sorts of questions or are curious or are going through this transition themselves and just want to share something or want to ask something, and that's awesome. And then every once in a while. I'll get these emails that are like, hey, you know, um, I think you're so beautiful, and I've never been with the TS before. By the way, I'm straight. And it's like, hi, I wasn't asking. Like, what makes you think I care? <laughs> I'm not, I'm not here, uh, I don't, I'm not here asking about your orientation or your gender. So, like, it's, it's fine for you to tell me, but what are you getting at, you know? And usually it's like someone that thinks I'm hot and wants to do me. Sometimes they might want to stalk me, and like, suddenly I have all these association with all these dicks. <laughs> all these dicks out there that just want to tell me th that I'm a fantasy. I'm their fantasy, I think. And it's it's totally weird. And like... I don't know. I don't want that kind of attention. So, like, don't tell me that shit. If you're gonna email me, don't tell me that shit. Or you're just gonna get deleted. So, that's all that's on my mind today. I seem to have bounced back from my little depression, but I hope you're all great, and I'll see you next time.